I'm trying to find my angle now. Whoa, okay, wait, 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 wait. And this is super annoying, but it's okay. I think you can handle a green spot now. Can you, can you? Can you hide it with my hair? No, I'm officially a reporter. Okay, it's fine. Whoa. I mean, it's nice, no? If you're hopping on every station to another train, then you have an issue. So, what I got myself. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my huge channel, live from the streets of Paris. I'm your reporter, your very local reporter today. Talking to you from Marais, which is a um, hipster, artsy, cool district in Paris. And today we're doing a bit vintage shopping. Uh, as some of you might know, I'm not the biggest vintage shopper, to be honest, because of different reasons. Uh, I usually cannot really find my kind of aesthetic uh, in the old times, but I really love stuff that is influenced by 70s and 80s usually. See my coat and shoulder pads. I found some cool stores and I'm sure they're the best ones and today we're having a look. And now we're like on this main street, it's Marais, so this is not really the beautiful side of Marais, to be honest, because it's main street with a lot of cars and stuff. So now we're crossing KFC, which is not very representative for this district. But uh, when we go into the sideways, uh, side streets, they're full of galleries, especially art galleries. And Marais used to be like actually a pretty poor district, like everything, like every district in the world. People capitalized on smart ass artists that made districts beautiful and then capitalism strikes back, everything gets super expensive. The people making the district school cannot really afford it anymore, including me. I could also be one of those artists, you know? Cool. What? The lamp looks yeah. like a bone. These are nice. Fucked up, but nice. My favorite one. What I love the most on the street market is that it's so quiet. You don't hear anything. It's so calming. And we're in the middle of Marais. It's amazing. I like these vintage jeans Chanel, to admit, because they look so trashy and not very Chanel. That's when it's good, oh. Chanel. Whoa, this is very Miu Miu. <laughs> You're looking at this? Yeah. Oh, it's very Miu Miu. Yeah, it's really nice. No. Like he did it this time. Yeah, really? Yeah. How much is this? Sixty. I mean, it's nice, no? But it also smells kind of, no? Yeah, like lamb. <laughs> like leather. But he has good stuff. I like this too. Looks like the, your Givenchy. But it's shorts. Yeah, in shorts. So the only problem I have with vintage, and that's also the reason why I very rarely wear it, is the smell. Like, I mean, you can get stuff clean, that's no problem. But leather is a bit problematic. The smell of many items, you cannot get rid of it. And I can't handle it. I'm too old for this. Like, I did it with 15, uh, but now I'm turning into my mom. So I'm turning into the person that my immigrant mom was, uh, who thinks secondhand clothing is something for the poor. Which we were, so that's why I was wearing it. This smell is really an issue for me. If anybody has a good idea of how to get rid of it, please tell me. We're on the way to Obscure, which is a pretty niche, pretty unknown vintage store. Please, I'm not gatekeeping anything from you, but don't destroy everything. Uh, don't make TikToks about all the places. It's always super hard, you know, because on the one hand, you want, of course, all those small shops to be super successful and you wish them all the success they can have. And on the other hand, it is hard. I mean, if you're like me and um, you're always in search of something special that is not very mass and that defines your style in the best way, you usually find these in niche brands and niche stores. If these things manage to get hyped, which is commercially amazing for certain brands, they can also destroy brands. I think we need to be careful just with the way we consume 
certain trends and style. It's absolutely okay to hop on trends. I think I hopped on a trend in 2017, which is like broad shoulders, knife boots, and a bit more edgy, uh, yeah, edgy masculine slash feminine look. And I stayed on this train until now. I didn't manage to hop off. And it's absolutely cool because I didn't hop off because of that to do a Y2K yeah. train. So sometimes you can't just stay on your trans train. But that means you're convinced of a style and you found your style with it. But if you're, if you're hopping on every station to another train, then you have an issue. Still reporting from Maria here. I just went to a vintage store to show you actually how cool it is. Until I saw like on every wall a huge image of not being allowed to film anything. But look at this. I got myself a small item. And even though I'm not the biggest archive shopper and I'm not in the search of vintage Margiela, vintage Junior, vintage Yoji or anything. I still found something for myself because it's something more sophisticated and something that resembles my style really cool. But just look at this packaging. He literally like ripped some fabric, uh, wrapped this around, made these ribbons and now I can carry it like a little bag. And they also told me like, yeah, this is a bag and you can also carry it. It's waterproof cotton fabric. Uh, and I actually can reuse it like it's the most beautiful way for me personally to show that you're sustainable and not only have Now the superstar is coming by the way in the back a girl you might know I'm still the party here. I'm still the party uh, But I will show more later and there is the party Is this the camera? Mm. Is this, the camera? this is my camera. It's actually, actually it's crazy. Can I show something? Show me. I was just watching at a video we recorded a year ago Oh my god, we were so cute! We were and so now cute. We're in Paris, from Aww. <laughs> we made it, we literally made it. And now I'm meeting Aliza for a coffee, and we will have a coffee and a great time. This thing on is something I always wanted to say. As you might have seen, I was out and about trying to find many vintage stores for you, have a look for the best stuff. I went into one single vintage store, I will tell you why. Also, I have a microphone now, which you haven't seen before, so I'm very YouTube video creator official, I would say. I cannot do any more. I have a microphone now and I'm official, guys. And also, please don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, because apparently 50% of you aren't. If you subscribe to this channel, it would be amazing. So this will not be a big haul video or something, but I thought I should share with you what I got myself. Not as interesting as the vintage store find that I had was I went to Muji, as you might have seen, because I carried these back the whole day. So the main things I always get at Muji are uh, socks and underwear, and and yeah, these kind of things. The quality is insanely good. I got, I got three pairs. Socks are pretty important to me and should be important to anybody because they look good, they're cozy and comfy and they're beautiful. They're our friends. Socks are our friends. So as you can see, I got myself like one pair that is like a bit skiing socks like. I like it that it's like, uh, that it has two different colors that it consists of. I got myself one navy pair that I get myself every time. In winter, they're a bit more um, thick. This is the a bit thinner version, but still thick, you know? Don't come at me with cotton socks that are super thin. Like, girl, no, I don't want this. It's not cozy. I have a lot of shoes where I like slide in. And when you slide in socks and, and in your shoes, it's horrible. And then I got myself like one light brown, a light beige version, because I thought now, I don't know, it's springtime, and maybe if I have a lighter look, I will need light colored socks as well, because I don't have any. I usually buy navy socks because it fits with everything. Three pairs cost $8.90, which is crazy cheap for the quality. I mean, Muji is probably not, I mean, it's not a high-end brand that doesn't stand for luxury, but to me, it's also like not a fast fashion retailer still, I would say, since it's not as big as H&M or something. I also got myself is a pair of leggings, which are amazing. I love these, I prefer these instead of tights. And these are, it's like amazing cotton. They're just really good. I got myself a size S. I wear it in winter and honestly, since I'm always cold, nobody knows that I'm wearing tights under all my pants, but I do. These are 
like 1790. I know there are cheaper things out there, but they're really well made, extremely well in quality. There is no pilling or anything. I have one pair I think that I use now for two years and this time I thought like, okay, maybe I should get one new version. So I got myself these tights. And then since I'm a very poor person, I needed um, like undershirts. I don't know how you even call it. What is this called? It's a sleeveless top. You know, I was born and raised as a person that needs to wear something below tops to not get cold. And you know, you get addicted to it. It's crazy. Once you get used to wear like tank tops under your shirts, you feel like you're super cold. And I want to be this cool girl, you know, who's usually wearing tops that, uh, where you can see a bit of your belly. You know, it can be a bit more feminine sometimes, but I'm just that girl that gets cold so quickly that I don't care and follow everything my mom says, which is, girl, you wear a better top every, underneath everything, you will get cold. I really like the cut of this one. It's a very basic cut, but in many stores you cannot find it. I have to say, I looked at the ones at Muji and they reminded me too much of my dad who comes home and takes everything off and is wearing like a white tank shirt. You know, and I'm like, Dude, can you please wear a t-shirt? You see them and it's not aesthetically pleasing. And I love this cut. I mean, you can even wear it as a tank top, but it's amazing. It's slightly ripped. Uh, it is 100% cotton. I love it. Uh, this is like the airism sleeveless tank top that they have. What is the price? Uh, 15 euros, but you just need like three pairs in your life and you're good if you wash stuff often enough. So I'm really happy with my Muji slash Uniqlo Hallward concerning this. I do these kind of stuff like I would say every four or five months, maybe every three months I buy like new socks and stuff. Good socks are essential to make a person happy. Like for me personally, right, because right now I didn't have good socks, I didn't feel like myself. I was not myself anymore and I mean I have a slight socks addiction as well. That's why I also sometimes buy like luxury socks too. Uh, because I just like the feeling to touch it. So everybody has their issues. Mine is that. Another piece that I bought that I really want to show you was this cute bag that I told you about. It's that store called Obscure Vintage, I told you already. It looks pretty um, exclusive in terms of like, you need to walk inside a hallway and then there are like three buildings and one of them and nobody, nowhere is the name written or anything you get inside. And what is crazy about the selection is there's no trash at all. And that's my main problem with vintage stores. I love, you know, to search for a good bargain everywhere. But vintage stores are really usually a huge mess, especially consisting of style that I don't even like. So it's very 70s, it's very white, okay, like all the vintage stores in Paris, and I feel like they're popping out more and more. I think everything cons consists right now of low-rise, flare jeans and Jean-Paul Gaultier tops, some vintage courage, some Pierre Cardin pieces, some Thierry Mugler. I think this is like really literally 80% of the Paris vintage market. So all these TikToks and everything that you say where they're like, oh my God, there is amazing stuff. Uh, go there. Like if you share my kind of aesthetic, it's absolutely nothing for you. You're really better to go to new retail stores and get yourself something that you like because this kind of minimalism you can find a bit at Prada, you can find a bit at Calvin Klein, DKNY, but they don't have these brands because they're not as popular. So maybe you can find it more in New York, I don't know, but I don't find any minimalistic pieces. Like sometimes I find old Prada pieces that are also like very much in detail and color, which I personally like when it comes to Prada, but you cannot really find minimalistic pieces. And then you have the thing with the smell and the washing and, it is very hard, but I know people that got great items as well. For me personally, it's hard. So that's why this store was a crazy surprise for me because I went inside and there were a lot of things that I liked and the selection is small. So it's not a huge store. I would say the store is like 30 square meters. So what I got myself is this long Junior Watanabe skirt. It looks like this. It's very exquisite. So to get into detail, you see here in the front, I know the lighting is horrible, guys. I'm so sorry. You have like some stitches here, some detail. It's 100% wool. In the back, it continues a bit. So you have the stitching on the sides as well, and you have a zip in the back. And the length is like this, so you have like a pretty long length. And why I got myself this? First of all, Junior Botanabe is a brand, so I only buy brands usually that are also overall with their brand image are representing me, but if I can't identify with a brand, I will not buy pieces of them. So Junior Watanabe for me personally is a new approach of trying new brands because the 
usual brands that I wear are pretty much Western brands, I would say, which is pretty boring and sad, to be honest. And I know a lot of people, you know, that right now, especially that love like Yoji, that love a lot of Comme des Garçons, that love, um, uh, yeah, a lot of Japanese brands. Uh, I really couldn't fit myself in between because I'm not a Yoji girl. I'm not an Andy Milmista girl. I'm not a Rick Owens girl. Uh, I'm a bit a Margiela girl, I would say definitely because there are sophisticated items that are like deconstructed that I really love. And I can always, I could always see myself in Junior Watanabe because I think it's way more wearable. And since it's, some pieces are minimalistic, but there's always a twist into it. And this is something that I personally love. Like there needs to be a joke about everything. Of course, you have brands like The Row that I also personally like, but you, there's no joke about it. I can make it funny though, like then I just combine it with something that looks ridiculous or looks like a contrast. So this is something I love. I love to take something sophisticated and pull it down with something very street or the other way around. So it is a game. To me personally, a look always has to have a clash. It needs to be a fight somewhere to be interesting. That's why I don't like the aesthetics of brands like, I don't know, Emile and Doré and all these aesthetics that are very American, high school, college boy inspired. Even though it looks aesthetically pleasing, like I cannot deny it, but it's so soothing in terms of um, being linear, you know, it is it is boring me, so that's why I can't wear it. I will show you how this one looks like quickly. This is a piece from the early 2000s, which I think is also very interesting since it's one-to-one, -one, the aesthetic that I like now, but it's like over 20 years old, which is insane. But you see, everything repeats itself. So it is way lower, that, and I needed to, that's why I put my tank like inside. It looks like this, the fabric is so soft. It looks very elegant. I go to the very back so you see like the real length of it. It has no pockets, unfortunately, but you have the details here. I think it's very much my aesthetic. It's very simple. I think it's beautiful in the summer to wear this with like flip flops and to black tank top, a black t-shirt with everything you want. It looks very elevated. It's a beautiful designer. It's a beautiful design. I have to say the prices are very decent. It has been a long time that I have been this positively surprised. So it's been, it's, it's a crazy, it's the, the price and piece ratio is really good. I feel super comfortable. I have a slit in the back and I'm so happy to find a good substitute. The stuff that I have from Zara and stuff that I don't wear anymore, I will, I will put it definitely on something like Depop, but I really love it. It doesn't fit perfect, perfectly. This is a size M, but maybe I can tuck it in very slightly. I think personally, it's really nice. I don't know if you buy brands like these in vintage stores. Do you have any recommendations in any city, tell me please about it because that's really hard. I'm not gatekeeping Obscure, even though I would like to, to be honest, but it's a place you need to see. And if you have a minimalistic and a bit deconstructed aesthetic, it's the perfect store for you. And I will get my chair back because I'm an old lady that needs to sit. So this has been actually it. This is the skirt that I bought. And I kind of only recommend you going to the store. They actually also do rental. In terms of the prices, I don't know how much it's worth it, but if you're a producer or a stylist or something, it's definitely worth calling them. Somebody also told me you can only get inside if you have a reservation. You don't have to. I called them, they were just like, no, come over. And it was a Sunday, it was open. So many vintage stores are also not open on Sundays. And that's actually it. So actually this is really, the most important vintage store you need to see in Paris. And I just want to make sure that you all don't fall in this, those traps of a lot of TikTokers and also YouTube videos that um, share like vintage stores where you will just lose a lot of money for very trashy things and that you can get just one to one the same on flea markets for like five euros. So it's really not worth it if you're not a trend focused person and I assume and I'm very sure you are not. So this has been it. I hope you like this video. The next one will be again about Paris Fashion Week or, or any designer that in the moment interests me. If you have any video ideas, tell me also like if there's anything you certainly are interested in. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I love to do this for you. If you want me to be able to continue weekly, because I know I already missed a week, please subscribe so I can be more independent and spend more time on this. I love you so much. Um, Everybody come move to Paris and let's make a big party. FYI, there was a big party like two days ago and that's why I didn't do anything yesterday. If you like electronic music and techno, they're crazy DJs. One of them is called Thibaut. Really good. There was another one, Omar and Tini. It was a crazy party. I recommend also the music 
hard in Paris. Maybe I make a video about that because music is also an important part of my life. Do you like music? Do you care about music? I don't know, but it's pretty good. So, see you to the next video. Bisous!